six times more of us, but thank God for you and the Lord. Amen? All right. We have any spoken requests tonight? Sutherland's and a boy named Tommy. I'm going to try to give him the book Case for Christ tomorrow. He told me like first week, I'm an atheist. Uh, so I'm going to try to give him a book tomorrow. So just pray that he's receptive and that he reads it and God can touch him. His name Amen. is Tommy. Tommy. Amen. Tommy. Tommy. Sister Smith has got surgery coming up, and uh, they you know, give the doctor's wisdom to, to see and get and do what needs to be done. God may do it all beforehand. Amen. Amen. And then Sister Renee Hart, she really needs special prayer. She's having uh, surgery Tuesday, and um, uh, it, it's very serious as well. God, give us new souls. There was a man uh, visited us this morning, seemed to Enjoy the service. His name was Poppy, if I understood him right. And uh, uh, there was a visitor's card in the offering, so that may be his. But I uh, just pray for the gentleman that was here this morning. He talked like he's got a family. So let's pray they'll come and get in and God will just send hungry hearts our way. And send us to those that are hungry as well. Amen. We're not going to just be lazy. We just need God to bless our efforts and, and direct our paths. Pray for the service tonight, and uh, that God will just give us all strength and healing and use us to accomplish His will for uh, for, the for God to touch him at school and uh, protect him, put an edge of protection around about him. Amen. 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 Pray for Andrew and Hannah for God to touch them and just bless them and just continue to use them and, and uh, let them stay on the fire line. Amen. All right. Would you stand tonight? Let's just each go to the Lord. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you. We praise you. Lord.
page 
super moon in the sky. And, uh, you know, this month is the month of the blue moon. Uh, that doesn't have any spiritual significance in itself, but it means that there's two full moons in one month. It only happens once every two, three years. And, uh, but anyway, there was one on the first of August, so there's going to be another full moon. Amen. This one on the 31st is highly unusual because this will be the biggest and brightest full moon this whole year. The reason for that is the moon is so close to the Earth, which means uh, gravitational pull will be extraordinary during that time frame. And, uh, and the moon will be 14% bigger, and I think 47% brighter than normal. So it's going to be a big fat moon out there at the end of the month. The other thing uh, that might be of significance is uh, next month in September, as you know, God God has a calendar. We have a calendar in America. God has a calendar. And generally speaking, uh, his calendar starts September or October for the following month, September or October. So on the 15th of September, uh, the last two weeks of September, we're going to have three major feast days. We're going to have days later, uh, we're going to have the uh, uh, month before the holiest day of the year, the Feast of the Atonement, and then five days after that, of course, it will be, uh, it will be Tabernacles. And it's all three in, in a very short period of time. Well, what's that mean? It means that the Hebrew year will change. 5783 to 5784, and that one digit, number four, represents a door. Represents a door. And I do believe this coming year, starting the 15th of September, the Hebrew calendar will be an extraordinarily, very unusual year. Uh, how, how would that be? Well, let's think about it. Uh, we're going to have, uh, I, I believe, we're going to have what's going to be within that one year. This year, this September, next year, the Red Heifer in Israel uh, will be, I believe, successfully sacrificed. Uh, the other thing, that, another thing that will take place is on the 8th of April uh, next year on your calendar, uh, we will have a total solar eclipse from right over the top of Dallas, Texas, to go straight across the country. Uh, and then uh, the other thing is. I believe, militarily speaking, some very, very significant events are going to take place in the state of Israel, concerning Israel in the Middle East. That's my personal opinion. And, and next summer of next year, uh, which also falls in that one year of the year, uh, uh, the Republicans will elect who they're, who they're going to put up for president in November. That will take place next summer. So there's a lot going on. Uh, I do believe it's a year of transition, in my personal opinion. And uh, I, think, uh, I think God's got plans. And I, I think, you know, as we, as we look forward, uh, it's always a blessing for us. We just get we just get a front row seat at what's going on in the world. Amen. I know you know this in this world. In this world. But, uh, but I do think uh, this will be a very unusual year, Hebrew year coming up. Appreciate that, Brother Smith. All that info, you keeping us lined up and abreast of knowing what's going on. Amen. Thank you, Brother Nick, for giving our prayer amen, Sister Hannah. Amen. Thank you for all you do. You know, God never lets one thing pass. He keeps records of every bit of it. And I'm telling you, He's a good God. And He's just looking for opportunity. How many of you that have had kids and, uh, Everybody's not as blessed as our brother over here, Brother Marcus, to be, uh, uh, you know what I mean, to be such a spring chicken, you know, a young man. That's not a good illustration, I guess, spring chicken. What's a good young man want to be referred to as? Spring chicken. Uh, spring chicken. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not as far off as I thought then. Anyway, 
He's got, let's just pray that God will give him uh, pa parents that will be grandparents emotionally where they can just spoil him real good and take care of him. And I know they've done a great job. He's such a mannerly young man. And I love him. I love his spirit. And it's just a great honor for God to send him our way. And I pray that we can be faithful to do our part to be the influence that he desires and needs. Amen. To be a blessing to the kingdom. Amen. 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 Anybody else want to testify, Brother Nick? I thank God. I love the Lord. Speaking of young men, I met a young man of Walmart. Brother had a Bible in the back pocket, he was preaching the gospel. Praise the Lord. He wasn't, all, he wasn't trying to make a scene. He was just telling people about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I pray that young man, maybe he might be a fellow Walmart. I don't know. But as long as Jesus is being preached, I can tell what's from his heart. Because he knew the scripture. Amen. There was love. He didn't see his spirit was real sweet. Oh, how they know me. And I said, oh, yeah. And I just shut his hand and I was encouraged by him. Amen. I, I heard I was one of the folks who passed out that son, he said, Brother Jesus, he said, he encouraged my heart. Get back on the back out there, Brother Jesus. Don't give up. And continue to tell people that you expect love and then come back to him. Yeah. But we knew by the Holy Spirit going into us. Amen. And I wanted to be me, I wanted to be him inside of us. Amen. Amen. Grant it, Lord. Thank God for everyone, Brother Andrew. I'm thankful for the goodness of the Lord. I was reading in Mark chapter 12. Uh, right at the end of chapter 12, Jesus is talking about the widow's offering, right? We're all familiar with the, mm -hmm. with the widow's life. Right. And uh, it says, and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money to the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she drew in two mites, which make a farthing. Call unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast it more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Don't make it scratch your head. What? Two mites, one farthing, is more than all of their silver and gold. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want yes. did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Yes. Yes. Amen. God's not looking for numbers. Right. God's not impressed with numbers. God's yeah, impressed Lord. with sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Right. I can't help but uh, but to think of, of the scripture in the Old Testament when Samuel looked at Saul in the face and said it was better to obey than to sacrifice. And uh, it's a matter of the heart. Right. God's looking for surrender in the heart. He's not looking for big numbers. He's not looking for all the flashiness. Right, He's right. looking for a heart condition. I've heard all my life it's a heart condition. Right. And uh, it, it used to get on my nerves because sometimes I would ask a question and they'd look at me and respond with, well, Andrew, it's a heart condition. What in the world does that mean? And as I've grown older, I've learned to understand what it's a heart condition really means because God, it's not everything is really spelled out just exactly how we would like for it to be. Right. There's a heart condition to serve God. And if it's in your heart to serve God, then a lot of these details are ironed out. If it's your, in your heart to serve the world, all these okay. details will be showing up. Yeah. And uh, if we'll keep our heart, and we'll give out of our heart, oh, yes. we'll please God. Amen. And that could be giving of our time, that could be giving of our money, that could be giving of, of, of anything. Let God deal with us on what, what to give, but I want to give with my heart. Yes. I don't want to, want to have enough to give some extra, but say, well, I've given... What I was half to give, I gave the 10%, and then I gave another 2% for offering, and I'm good to go. Now I'm stacking up the cash over here if, if I have it. If God deals with me about giving it, I want to have a heart to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to have a heart that's just about well, percentages and numbers and you know, a heart that's willing to obey God. Oh, that's yes. all I want to have. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to testify? We'd love to have you glorify the Lord tonight. Good to have our brother and sister come here. Amen. I don't have nothing to praise the Lord about. <laughs> sister Angela praises the Lord for Tommy. <laughs> yes. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to come to you tonight for the offering and say we thank you for being faithful to the Lord always, giving and 
letting God use whatever you've got for His glory. Amen? Amen. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord. It's not all about the money. 
Amen. But that's just a part of God's faithfulness. And when we opened the, the letter, there was a sweet note and letter of encouragement there. There was a check. And I'm telling you, the check was to the dollar. It may not have been to the very penny, but it was to the dollar of enough to pay everything that we owed and needed to be paid. And I praise God. It was like twelve or $1,400. And back then, that was like 28 years ago or something. That was a lot of money to us. And uh, that just encouraged us. Yes. And I'm telling you, if you'll just trust God, God is faithful in the little things yes. and in the big things. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Always do your part. And God will always do his part. All right. Praise okay, the Lord. I'm going to testify. I don't want to miss that chance, but I knew I was supposed to sing. So uh, I never fail to have something to say. But my mouth dries out so bad when I know I've got to sing. I'm just like, you know. <laughs> but uh, I thank God for healing me once again. Amen. Uh, Amen. Night after y'all prayed for me, I went home. I felt so much better. And so that night when I was praying, I said, Lord, I said, I'm not going to get those pills refilled. I'm going to trust you. It's over with. You've healed me. And so then the next day, uh, I went to the Kroger pharmacy to tell them to put the pills back. I didn't want them. I wasn't going to need them. They said, uh, we done put them back. <laughs> and I went, after one day, okay, well, <laughs> God's reassurance that I've done the right thing. Yes, anyway. Anyway, anyway but I'm going to sing this. Is this thing on? Hello? Yes. yes. <laughs> so here we go again. Amen. Worship the Lord tonight. Amen.
before you stand tonight, I uh, I was reading this afternoon and and didn't know what I might minister somewhere in Hebrews, and I got to reading. I went back. I, I seems like I was in the tenth chapter, and I went back to the introduction and uh, the Life of the Spirit Study Bible. And I'll, let me just read you a couple of sentences, two or three sentences here. It said, Hebrews was written primarily to Jewish Christians who were undergoing persecution and discouragement. The writer strives to strengthen their faith in Christ by carefully explaining the superiority and the finality of God's revelation and redemption in Jesus Christ. Amen. The next sentence says, he shows that God's redemptive provision under the old covenant have been fulfilled and made obsolete by Jesus' coming and the establishment of the new covenant through his atoning death. And that's as far as I got. I uh, looked at word obsolete up and um, I know the, the, the law was not done away with. It was fulfilled. I know that. And I didn't know exactly uh, what, I didn't understand that. I didn't know what somebody may be able to explain it to me a little bit uh, later. But uh, I want to, uh, tonight I want to talk to you just about some scriptures that I began to follow along. And it was the 10th chapter. In Hebrews chapter 10, and uh, Tell you what, I'll read 19, 20, 21, and 22. That may have been the direction that I was going to go uh, this afternoon. But Hebrews chapter 10, talking about our, us having assurance in faith unto God. And having therefore, brethren, verse 19, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Amen. By a new and a living way, which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. God, we just praise you and we thank you for your word. And we know, God, that there's no part of your word that God is going to be obliterated or uh, done away with before its fulfillment is accomplished and taken place. And I pray tonight, God, that your people would rejoice in you. God, that we will never worry or fret over a loved one, over a co-worker, God, over a student over a, a grandchild or a child or somebody that might be struggling with you, Lord, in church. I pray that you take every one of us, God, and you accomplish your will in and through us, Lord, that you may be 
uh, exalted, God, that we may be edified. And most of all, God, that your will may be fulfilled, Lord, for your glory. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for all you've done and are doing. And we give you all honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated tonight. Amen. Talking about having a full assurance of faith. And uh, I didn't really, I was kind of grieved when I read that word. We've, we've given out probably 60 or 70 of these Bibles to different people over the years. And you say, well, that's a little bit of a pricey Bible to be given out. It is. But God's always been faithful to provide. And we've not tried to just uh, be loose uh, if, if, if we felt it was someone that, that uh, uh, we didn't feel like we need to give them to. We didn't. But I can tell you, there have been very few people that wanted or asked or needed a Bible. When we had these Bibles in store that we didn't give them one of these Bibles. Why? Because they might read something that would open them up to something in the gospel that they have been, may have been previously closed to. Because we don't know what all God's doing with a person. And how many times have I went to witness to people and think it's not going to accomplish anything and it's not going to do any good and then be hungry and receptive and even at times wind up coming to church and getting saved. Amen. So God is on the throne and we, we praise the Lord for that. But I've always felt good about giving these Bibles and being a blessing. But it bothered me. When I read that, and I began to spend probably 30 or 45 minutes uh, uh, searching that out and, and understood that it was talking about uh, uh, fulfillment, uh, so to speak, if I understood it right. But I'm going to go back and finish later, but I had to get uh, on with tonight. And uh, uh, I want to read to you, and you just follow along with me in Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and a living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. In other words, that is to say his flesh. You remember at the crucifixion of Christ? I mean, brother, there was a, a, an earthquake. There was an eclipse. And when Jesus said it is finished, the veil in the temple uh, was, was ripped in twain from top to bottom. And brother, they said that it would take at least six oxen, six cart of oxen, amen, pulling against one another to pull the ark of, of uh, uh, that, that veil into there. Right. It was not just a little piece of rotten cloth. It was very strong. But what God was doing, God was saying, no longer can just the high priest enter in annually and once a year, amen, offer a sacrifice for your sins and offer a scapegoat and offer this and that and the other and everything. But now, once and for all, Christ has paid the price. Right. And I want you to know Genesis 3.15 talks about, amen, how that. His heel was going to crush the serpent's head. Right. Yes. And the serpent's head was going to bruise his heel. Yeah. I'm telling you, what Jesus went through was not comfortable. But it paid a big price. Right. It paid our sin debt. Yes. And it made a way for us to go free. Amen. Yes. Verse 21 says, And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. What are our meditations? What is it that's on the back burner of our heart? My wife and I, just today, ask each other one or two times, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I'm so glad, amen, that, that when somebody asks me what I'm thinking, I can usually tell them what I'm thinking. And when I can't tell them what I'm thinking, I tell them two or three things that I just got through thinking, and I'm not sure which one of them I was thinking at the moment. But I cannot remember a time by the help and grace of God, Sister Hazel, that I said, whoops, I don't need to share that. Amen? Right. Because God knows what we're thinking. 
He knows what's on our heart. He knows what's on our, our mind and what's on and on and in our conscience. Amen. And he says for us having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Verse 24, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Do you have a heartbeat to motivate and encourage people to do good? Did you know if your loved ones are like some of my loved ones, it seems like the devil wants to crowd us and, and the devil wants us to make us think that if we witness to them again, they're just going to be further turned off. They're just going to, uh, you know, they're just not going to appreciate it and not want to hear it. But I'm telling you, God help us to so walk with the Lord that we can witness to one another and love one another and try to encourage one another. We went to eat today, Brad and, Mar and uh, Brad and Marcy, Brad and Christy, Marcy, Brad and Marcy used to go to our church in, in Colorado. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, anyway, Brad and Christy was going to get on the road and not go to lunch with us. But they decided to go to lunch with everybody, so we went to Cain's, and we were there eating. And there was a girl sitting there, and I started to tell her Jesus loved her. And I thought, no, I don't need to do that. I don't need to tell her Jesus loved her. You know, she's moving the tea around and taking care of everything and she may have a guy here you know that's not in the mood for me to be going and telling her Jesus loves her and uh, lo and behold I, I seen somebody there and, and I began to talk to him and I began to talk to him about the love of God and how much Jesus loved him and he was precious he was precious. I mean, brother, I'm telling you, he had that cross he was bearing and he had that, that Jewish uh, deal on his collar. He supported Israel and the Jews. And, and I mean, he was just full of life and every man. And we got through talking there and, and I began to wait for him to go. And, and lo and behold, he walked around me and he went straight to that woman that I was going to witness to and tell her that Jesus loved her. And I just told him the whole story right fast. Didn't take very long. And Brother Queen, looking at your watch. Oh my goodness, that's a distraction. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, some people, I'm telling you, it's something. It's something. How much pressure. It used to be I only felt that kind of pressure when I was around ranked sinners. But I'm telling you now, it seems like Christians and especially family, you get around them and you're going to want to be a blessing to them about the Lord. And if we're not careful, the devil will shut us up. We can't be shut up, church. we got to have enough faith and enough love. I beg God. I beg him, Brother Nick, God, give me a meek spirit. Moses was a man. None other was meeker than him in the whole land. God, give me a meek spirit. I don't want just a, a broken and a contrite heart from mistakes and, and failures and, and, and shortcomings and everything. But I do want a broken heart that's broken toward people and the sins. I mean, brother, when I'm driving around, when I'm walking around, when I'm looking at this sinful world, it breaks my heart to see their condition and see that just any minute, hey, brother, the child of God, the children of God, could be gone and they're going to be all alone and brother they're going to be reveal the truth and the reality that they are left behind right. it needs to bother us yeah, right. it needs to get a hold of our heart why because God wants to pray. I don't know Tommy I may never meet Tommy but I'm telling you what I need to be willing to have a burden Amen for your loved ones and for your acquaintances and my acquaintances and loved ones. Yeah. Not forsaken, this famous verse, verse 25. Not forsaken, the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for our sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Verse 28. He that despised Moses' law does died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Oh, how much sore punishes suppose ye 
shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under foot the Son of Man, or the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. God help us. God help us not to take for granted. God help us not to take lightly. Thank God for each of you, for what you do, for what you represent. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. And as I was reading about this, what kind of afflictions? They were fighting the same things that you and I fought when we first came to the Lord. They were fighting the flesh, conquering and getting the flesh, bringing it under subjection and, and learning how to be mighty in spirit and, instead of being mighty in the flesh. And, and the lust of the flesh partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used for ye had compassion of me Paul said amen or Luke whichever one it was amen in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance cast not away therefore your confidence which have great rep recompense of reward. Don't lose heart. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't throw in the towel ever on anybody toward God. Don't throw in the, the towel toward God. I mean, I give up. I've had enough of this. Amen. I mean, I just can't keep putting up with this. Uh, those neighbors are about to drive me crazy. I mean, I'm telling you, there's things that used to bother me I'm telling you almost like you'd be rejoicing if those were the things you're having to deal with today compared to some of the things we're having to deal with. But God is a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated you endured a great fight of affliction. Partly while you, you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became companions of them that were so used. In other words, Paul remembered the time when they led him to Stephen's garments. Mm -hmm. That's right. Besides Saul there. You know, Saul never could get away from that. His name, God gave him a new name, Paul. God changed him. I don't know if anybody was ever used in the New Testament compared to Paul as far as he wrote like what, 13 or 14 books of the New Testament? Mighty, mighty man of God. I mean, seeing things not lawful to declare. Uh, uh, God uh, on the road to Damascus smote him with blindness God sent Ananias to, to pray over him that he might receive his sight. God told him where it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen. Amen. And God illuminated it. And it was a living testimony and witness to the power and the anointing of God. He said, for ye had compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience after that you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You and I are alive in God because of the blood, because of the price that Jesus paid. Colossians 2 and 6 said, And as ye have, there, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him. Amen. And established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. 
Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness, in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. Colossians 2 verse 10. You and I are complete in God. I was praying with a brother this week, amen, who'd been troubled and everything. And, and I tried to get him to see and I tried to convince him that he is complete in the Lord. Amen. It don't matter how the enemy tries to torment. It don't matter how the enemy tries to, to, to steal, kill, and destroy. He has no power. Why? Because we're children of the king. We're heirs and joint heirs of Christ Jesus. We're king's kids. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Do you realize the first fruits, Christ, being raised by the dead? What a testimony. There wouldn't be the church that there is today if anybody could have really disproved that. They can accuse, but they can't disprove. Brother, the Word of God verifies it. The testimony and the witness verifies it. The word of God verifies it. All the apostles being willing to die and give their life verifies it. Those 40 or 500 or 12 or 2 or however many that Jesus showed himself to verifies it. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God hath quickened. He hath quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it, amen, out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Right. Amen. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I want you to know, you and I, we can be confident in the Lord. We can be confident in the Lord. Amen. If we'll trust in the Lord and rest in the Lord. John 6 and 58 said, This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Amen. Both sure and steadfast and which entereth in and to that within the veil. Turn me up just a little bit if you don't mind. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Chapter 10 of John 10, verse 7 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Hebrews 7, 23, And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, Jesus, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, right. who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice. First for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once. He offered the sacrifice for our sins, not having any sin of his own, in other words. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son, capital S, the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. Amen. That's how we can be assured that we have eternal life. I want you to know I thank God for the feeling that God has given me ample times since God saved me. 
But did you know the night God saved me, January the 6th of 1980, when I nailed down right there, I didn't shed a tear. I didn't feel one goosebump. I didn't feel saved. I didn't feel like I looked saved. I didn't feel like I acted saved. I didn't feel like I thought I was saved. But Brother Nick, he was all I had. He was all I had. I told him, if you'll save me, I'll serve you. And I knew I couldn't do it. Sister Pauline, I tried. Not four or five times, probably 13 or 14 times. I tried to live that Christian life. But the devil was lying to me. The devil had me misconstrued. I wouldn't do it near as much sinning, Brother Don, as the devil was accusing. But my understanding was messed up. I didn't realize, I didn't get a hold of what God had really done in me and was doing in me. But that night, like Sister Pauline, before she sang, I had to give God a try and believe in Hebrews 13 and 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Amen. That word everlasting there is ahionius, and it means perpetual. Past, present, and future. Before and after time. Before, during, and after time. Amen. Eternal, forever, everlasting. Before the world began. Jesus saved us. And he saved us. From everlasting to everlasting. Brother, I'm telling you what, he's been there. Before he ever spoke man into existence, it was in the heart of God and the heart of the, the Godhead to create man in his own image and save him, knowing he was going to fall short. Not proud he's going to fall short. But God in his wisdom made a way for you and I to make heaven. Verse 21, may God make you perfect, perfect. Verse 20, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect and ever good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's how we can know. 1 John 5, 13, uh, 5, 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life, that you believe on the name, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. That word eternal life there is the very same word. It's, it's the very same word that says everlasting, aha, onias, perpetual. From now on, amen. And it's the it's a, it's a same word there. It means to perceive and understand that ye may know, that ye may perceive, that ye may see, that ye may be sure, that ye may tell and understand. And then that word understand, it, it's the same word as that word everlasting forever and ever. And it, that word that ye may know, that word ye may know, that ye may have eternal life and that you have eternal life it means life alive lively quick we're alive in God and you have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins brother I'm telling you there may come a time there may come a day there may come a moment that you feel despondent or disparaged, disparaging or discouraged but you realize it really does not belong to you Amen. That's not for the child of God. The child of God rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. God will give him peace. God grant you peace. Blessed, 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 blessed are the blessings of the Lord. Everlasting peace. God's day every day starts with blessings and end with blessings in the Lord. It's not hype. It's not superficial. It's something that we've already the earnest of our inheritance has been given us. You that at the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're saved in God. Your spirit and your body's been changed. Your want tos and your desires have been changed. You've got a new life in God. You no longer want to chase. Hey, Brother Nick, we don't want to chase after the wild and the burly women of the world. And burly may not be applicable, but you know what I mean. Amen. We don't 
overtaken bypass surgery. Sister Persinger called my wife and said, God told me God's going to give Charlie a heart, a new heart. And we took it and thought that she was talking about this old fleshly heart. And I believe God did. He did a great job. He's wonderful. He's faithful. He does all that. But I'm telling you, I rejoice in that other heart. I rejoice and thank God in that other heart that God gave me. That gave me a desire to love Him the way He's worthy to be loved. You, did you know almost every time I get in His presence, it's like I didn't realize how deserving He was before that time compared to that time. It's not that His presence is that much greater. It's just sometimes it's like I had drifted and wondered and forgot how good it was to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes I get in that prayer meeting and I just prayed maybe a three, four, five hours ago and didn't seem like nothing was happening and I get down to pray and nothing happens again from the natural. I'm telling you, I remember Daddy testifying, telling God that time he was preaching a revival somewhere. And God touched him and anointed him. And he said, God, if you'll just keep me and if you'll just let me feel that love ever now and then, God, I never want to stray or leave you. I'm telling you, you've never tasted of nothing this world has to offer that compares to the love of God. The devil tries to give us fear. The devil tries to give us worry. The devil tries to cause us to find fault or be whatever, hopeless. The devil's a liar. Remember, you're not your own. You and I have been bought with a price. We belong to God. I'm telling you, we just think our companions love us. And they do. But my, 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 God loves us. Amen, Brother Persinger used to every now and then say that, my, 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 just look who's here. Why don't we come into the altar, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a better message as far as being better organized and, and uh, something that could leave you with some meat that you could shout and feel good about and, and everything, but I want you to know God loves you, and God's enough. And he's going to help us. And those things Brother Smith was telling about, those things are exciting. It's exciting for him to be able to go to the Word, go to the book and find a lot of these things and see those things and see, compare them to, to the light of, of God's Word. But I want you to know God is wanting to be special to you and to me as well. Amen? Amen. Let's come and find us a, place, a special place to just love the Lord tonight. If you need special prayer at any time, you just linger around. We'll be happy to pray for you too. But let God touch you tonight. Touch the Lord. Touch Him. Let Him know how much you love Him, how much you care about Him, and how much you want to do a better job. Yes. Amen. Never trust in what we're doing, but trust in what He's already done. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray.